today I will show you my top 10 tips and tricks for the KF Rico Heist DLC. This will be a useful guide, both if you are a new player, struggling to fit into the new heist, finding out what to do, and even if you are a more experienced player who think you have it all figured out. I am very confident that I have at least one or two items here that you don't know about. And before we begin, I want to ask you what your favorite approach is. Do tell me in the comments and let's see if yours are mentioned. And now let's go top 10 tips and tricks for the KF Rico Heist DLC. So my first tip is that you should start the heist in a boat. Most people will probably think, nah, alkaline, the submarine, that's better. The submarine is best because then you spawn right at the drainage pipe. Well, it is correct you spawn at the drainage pipe with the submarine. This gives you only one option for entering after the preps. But if you do the boat, on the other hand, the civilian boat, this will let you enter anywhere on the island, on the coast at least. With the boat, you can actually drive towards the drainage pipe and then enter at the drainage pipe. You will actually get rebreathers with the civilian boat, which is awesome. And with the boat, let's say you get four players instead of one or two, then with the four players you can enter the dock that you started at the infiltration point and the guards won't mind you. The guards will actually be white because you have a disguise included with the boat. And it also takes around the same time to drive the boat from the port that you spawn in to the drainage pipe as it would take you to swim from the submarine to the drainage pipe. So I really don't see any advantage of taking the submarine over the boat and as I said you might be afraid of running out of breath while you are cutting the drainage pipes if you have more players if you're doing it solo you can just continue swimming in after you finish it and then you spam the right d-pad or e to interact with the um, location and, and then you will continue before you die usually but if you have more players I recommend you go back into the surface to get your lung capacity up again and then you just go back down once you, you, the other players see you up and then all you go all of you go in together that way you won't lose a life and it's much safer to do so this really makes the boat a great option both for solo and for several players and as i said you can just swim right from the drainage pipe to the location and if you don't make that distance then you should probably try to learn how to swim in gta my second tip is that you only scope out what's necessary and most people don't know this, but the only thing that's necessary is only to get the ca cameras. And I recommend when you do the scrap out that you only get the cameras in the compound, at the basement, the storage room and the office. Get everything that's in the compound basically because you want to know where the goal is, you want to know where the cash is so you can avoid the cash and you want to know where the artwork is so you can consider getting the artwork. Additionally, you do not want to do the lock cutters when you're scoping out the island and you do not want to do the grappling hooks because those are really unnecessary and just waste time because the lock cutters, you will get the lock cutters when you do the fort equipment prep. The preps, like do not do the demolition prep, but do the prep for the blow torches. That's the one I'm referring to because the blow torches will make you go through any gate without needing to get the lock cutters or using an explosive as most people think. And if you're wondering about the entrance to the compound, like you want to enter the, enter it with the grappling hook, then sure get the grappling hook. But if you want to enter through the, through the front side of the gate without using the, using the drainage pipe, and you still want to do stealthy, then just take out the guard or two, and they will most likely drop the code for the side doors, and then you can just enter silently anyways. And additionally, if you enter through the main gate, it will always go loud if you did the demolition prep. But if you don't do the demolition prep, you won't get access to the gate, except for if you get the disguises on the island and the truck. Then you can enter the compound silently. My third tip is that all players can grab one disguise. So most players, they think that if you are four players, then you will need four disguises scattered across the island. Like if you go to one box, then only one can grab from that, people think. So most people think that you have to go to like two or three. If you have two or three players, then you have to find two or three different boxes. But the truth is you will only have to find one box and all four players, they can share that one box. So if you want to do like, the kind of big con approach to this heist, then you only need to actually find one of the boxes and then in addition, of course, find the truck. And the only issue with, with this approach, I think, is that, is that I would like to get the big con option to be like an optional prep kind of. Like in, if you could still find them on the island, but if you wanted to make sure that you could enter that way, then like just enter the island straight away with the big con approach, that would be good. Um, I think you can do that, like if you do the boat approach and then get a disguise in that area you arrive in because the guards will be white obviously and they won't detect you. That can kind of be a big con approach. Get the boat, get the disguise and the truck at the same location. That can be a kind of a big con approach in the future. But by the way guys, can we just appreciate that we only have to do at least 5 preps to get a highest worth at least 1.5 million dollars solo. Can we just appreciate that? My fourth tips for you is during the preps. 
when you start a prep, always check the location of where the prep is happening. Like if a prep is happening at the other side of the map, say for instance you are at Vespucci Beach and the prep is at Palido Bay, you obviously don't want to drive the chopper to that location or a boat or anything. What you can do, which is much better and faster, is to just enter the driving seat of the submarine and use fast travel. Press X on Xbox, Square on PS4, or as pink as it is, Space on PC. And then you can just fast travel for the low price of only $2,000 currently for fast traveling across the map. So you don't have to like use five minutes of your time just to travel to the map. It takes like 30 seconds maximum, even with a cutscene. And I, I would say it's definitely worth it much faster otherwise, and you save a lot of time when you do a lot of preps. And in addition to this, let's say you finish a heist at the other side of the map than the submarine is located on. In this case, you can call the submarine back in using the interaction and service menu on the Kusatka, and then just return it, and then re-request it, and it will spawn at the position closest to you. So let's say you are at Plito Bay, the submarine is down at Vespucci Beach, then you can just call the submarine back to you at Polito Bay, so we won't have to drive back all the way down the map, which again can save you potentially five minutes. So let's say you draw all the way up and all the way down. This will probably take you 10 more minutes than you could just have saved by just using the submarine to call it to your location. And calling the submarine to your location, that's completely free by the way. My fifth tip is the fourth truck at the airport. So many players do not know about this and they get completely blown away when I show it to them in the heist I do with them. It is that you use the fork truck to get the loot on the second floor of the hangar in the airport. Let me show you here. So it is real simple. You just get the fork truck that's on the left when you look at the back of the hangar. Like when you enter the hangar, the fork truck will be on your left. Enter the fork truck and then drive to one of the pally with a big white box on it. Draw the fork truck so it picks that up and race it all the way and then drive it to the same wall entrance to the gate at the first floor. So drive it like to the wall you look at when you enter the hangar and then as make sure it's raised all the way up then you want to just like park it so it's at touching the wall basically the pallet is touching the wall and then you want to just exit the fork truck climb it and then climb the pallet and then you can climb the wall behind it and then you just drop down on the other side and you can open the door with the blowtorch or a cutter or a demolition charge preferably use the blowtorch as mentioned earlier and then you can just make sure you get like all of the loot at the airport because the airport has a lot of loot and by this you make sure you get all of that. And a special mention I want to do today is Pavel. He's basically carrying the entire DLC himself with his great lines and epic voice I would say. And if you haven't, I recommend you just stand by him to hear the jokes he makes. Me personally, I really enjoy the one he talks about firing missiles from the submarine onto the flying bikes as he calls them. And by the way, did you know that Pavel actually can give you free snacks? If you go down to the kitchen, he can actually provide you with free snacks, which, is, which are really useful for preps, which are kind of hard. And you can also bring them on heist, as you know. Snacks are always great. And by this, you won't have to go to a store or to your office or to other locations to get your snacks. My seventh tip is to cover the fingerprint hack. It is really easy, actually. Most players struggle with it, but it's actually really, really simple. So what you want to do is when you start the fingerprint hack, you want to find the top piece first. The top piece and the bottom pieces are actually the easiest to find. But once you find the top piece, you know that that's first, of course. And rocks are actually messed really up on this because they're all in order, basically, when you scroll to the right or to the left. So when you find the top piece on the first one, that's okay. Then you go one down and you find the top piece again. And then you go one to the right. Then that's that's the correct position. And then you want to go one down again. So you have to set at the third row. Then you want to find the top piece again. And then you want to go two to the right. And then you just repeat that. You go to the fourth row, and then you find the top piece, and then you want to go three to the right. So we're at the fourth piece. You know what I mean? And if if it gets too hard to count for like the fifth piece, sixth piece, then you just start from the bottom and work your way up. So when you're at the bottom, you look for the bottom piece, and then you go one up, and then you look for the bottom piece again, and then you go one to the left. And it should really usually it like fixes itself after the fourth or fifth because they're in order at the bottom sometimes but sometimes they can all be mixed up but this is like the easiest way i think to do it and i also have a tip for you pc users out there if you are struggling with frames then you know turning the grass quality down to normal instead of ultra high or very high always gives more frames because grass is some of the more demanding stuff in gta online and you don't only get more frames 
the best part is you can now see what trees you cannot drive into because if the grass is gone then you won't have grass you can fakely drive through that won't affect the drawing performance but if you turn it off you can actually see what trees are trees and not just random bushes you know because some trees really look like bushes and these bushes you can obviously not drive in and if you turn the graph settings off you can easily distinguish this from a flat underground my final and best or funniest tip is that during the scope mission the first one you know there's actually a way you can poison the guards water supply and this will in turn make the guards weaker less accurate and they will be slower to raise the alarm in addition power comes with some really great lines you just gotta check out yourself and this will only affect the guards that are outside of the compound not the ones inside I have found the item required to disrupt the water supply in two different locations so far. There may be more, but I've done this five times where I've discovered them and they've only spawned in these two locations. So I think they're only those two, to be honest. The first item you want to grab will be at this house in Farmlands on the east side of the map. And the second package is where El Rubio's employees package the cocaine at the north east of the main dock. So right up side of the main dock on the northeast of it. So right up side of the northeast of the main dock in this little hut here. And once you have acquired the item, you have to climb up to one of the water towers to activate it and then interact with the middle of it. It's going to be a little hatch where you can interact. And there is going to be a little animation, which is really interesting to look at. The first water tower is located at the north dock right up side of it. And the second tower is this big red tower right side of the main dock. It's really hard to not see it when you are at the main dock, really. And since there are two other towers, I am a little unsure if they will affect different areas. I haven't noticed that yet. Uh, I, think the I think it doesn't matter which one you affect. But if they do affect different areas, I will suggest you take the red tower. But I don't think they affect different areas. Therefore, I would just recommend that you get whatever water tower which is closest to you when you find this item. My ninth tip is if you're running this solo and you want a quick easy exit option besides the submarine, head to the main dock and just drive off-road straight to it. Don't follow the road because on the road there are a lot of vehicles and a watchtower. You can eventually take out the watchtower but there is still cameras in the way so I would just say go off-road and then just steal any boat at the main dock. Doesn't really matter which one as long as you take a boat and just drive it straight off the island it will work as an exit. My tenth and last trick and tip for this video is for your escape. What is your favorite met method for escaping before watching this? Please tell me in the comments. Because my favorite method is to just go to the cliff and shoot at the civilians driving the boats around the south southern side of the map here. Because this this you can actually do before the vehicles spawn in, before the cops spawn in, if you're doing aggressive. And if you're doing stealth, you can also do this before that any extra guards spawns in. And if you see a boat, then that's super great. My, in my opinion, I haven't really seen any boats spawning in after you die like after you fail the first time in this heist after your accident i don't see any boats spawning in so it, it, the first time is kind of key to get it and if you don't see any vehicles spawning and you have more players with you a trick is just to jump in the water and start swimming around if you are aggressive if you are sneaking i haven't noticed this yet because i've always gotten the boat the first try but if you go aggressive and the boat don't start spawning in then just swim in the water while your other players stand on the cliff ready to shoot any boats that may spawn in and once you get a boat then Get, on, get down to it, maybe one guy stay behind and protects you against choppers and boats that may spawn in once you are in the water. And once you are in the boat you can just hit the pedal to the metal and go in a straight line away from the island. And this will be working no matter what kind of escape option you have. So if you have a plane at the airport you can still hit a boat and then just drive away really quickly. And this will save you a lot of time and it's gonna be more efficient if you can get a boat at first time. A trick is kind of to get that bike that spawns right outside of the main compound. Get that bike and then just drive along the cliff, see if you find a boat. And if it's like ahead of you, then just drive a little forward, cut some corners, and then you can probably get ahead of it and then shoot it once it is at your location and you have a better line of sight. Did you find this helpful? What was your favorite tip? Tell me in the comments. And I hope you enjoyed. If you did, drop a like and consider subscribing for more content coming from me. It means a lot. Take care and I'll see you all in the next one.